This is Pastor Dean Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food. This is Pastor Dean Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food. We are still continuing with our series on the provision from God. And yesterday we were learning about the death of Jesus Christ and how it opened up a way that the depraved and alienated sinners can now come closer to God and be reconciled to Him. Now continuing on this topic, Apostle Paul Upon understanding the importance of reconciliation, he says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, the Bible says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Apostle Paul is urging the people to come to the Lord and be reconciled to Him. And after urging people to be reconciled to God, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the following chapter, verses 1 and verse 2, he advises the people to not receive the grace of God in vain. The Bible says, We then, as workers together with Him, also plead with you, not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Apostle Paul says, Come to the Lord, be reconciled to Him, and then do not receive the grace of God in vain, because now Today is the day of salvation. So, we understand from this lesson that reconciliation and salvation, they are closely related with each other. And both of them are provisions from the Lord. Now, continuing on uh, the next uh, word, we have the word forgiveness. What is forgiveness? Now, it is interesting to know that one of the New Testament words for forgiveness, it actually derives from the word grace. That is the word charismai. Charis means grace, and charismai actually is to grant forgiveness. The basis of this forgiveness, obviously, is the grace of God. Now, the word charisma is actually mentioned in many verses in the scriptures, but I would like to read before you today, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Having forgiven, that word forgiven there is actually charismai. And the Bible says, having forgiven all your trespasses. Since this forgiveness is based on the divine grace and love of God, so it is entirely an act of God based on how God feels. There is no outward influence. There is no obligation that is coming from the sinners. It is God's desire. It is God's act. It is God's own decision according to His free will that He will forgive the sinners. But there is one basis and that motivates Him to bring or to give this forgiveness and that is the cross. That is the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And because of that death of Christ, He made it possible to clear the sinner from guilt and penalty of his sins and restore him or restore that sinner into a perfect position, perfect standing before the Holy God. And uh, as we talk about forgiveness, it is totally an act of God. And we thank the Lord 
for the cross and for the bloodshed of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that, we have forgiveness of our sins. Now, tomorrow we will talk about the word justification and forgiveness and justification. They are very close to each other. They are connected with each other. Well, that's all for now. Tune in tomorrow as we talk about justification. Until then, enjoy your soul food.